people say that uh, oh, you know, it doesn't that the whole Harvey Weinstein thing doesn't happen in Singapore. I mean, it's not true. I'll give you an example. I was at a, a party, uh, another media party, right, with uh, where a lot of famous directors were were there, and uh, we all know that this this particular famous director was going to be casting for his next film. Mm. So I I went and said hello and said that you know. If there's an opportunity for me, please, you know, let me know. And then he asked me to make up with another female in 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 public, like at the party, for his entertainment. So I was actually quite uh, well upset, but of course I I didn't show it. So I just kind of laughed it all. Ha ha ha! You're drunk. Right. And then I went away and I I told this story to another friend who is also uh, quite a prominent figure in the media industry. And this guy said to me, "How badly do you want to be in the film? You know what's wrong with that? What's wrong with what he's asking you to do? Maybe it's his his way of auditioning you. You know, even if somebody so prominent in the media industry is actually condoning it, I mean, what chance do we have of yeah. changing the way things are? I mean, that's why it, people think it doesn't happen here because, as far as they're concerned, it doesn't matter. This this." You know, this is not, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Another another incident. You know, um, there was once when um, there was this horrible um, uh, video being circulated of a, a woman, I think, an actress being raped, and then they filmed mm-hmm. the whole thing. And I was really, really angry. So I, I kind of, I so I texted this uh, producer friend of mine, a female producer friend of mine, and I asked her, "How can we allow this to happen? Right. You know, this guy, they, they should actually." You know, the police should come down hard on these things. It should not be happening. And this female producer said to me, she deserved it. She shouldn't have, you know, taken the money and and then decided that she doesn't want to do the film. And I was like, whatever it is, that's a legal process. You may want to sue her, Absolutely. but you do not perform such violence Absolutely. against her. Yeah, you're right. And this is this is what I say that this prevalence, this social canvas of blaming the victim. Yeah. It's just so rampant that it's it's hard for survivors to speak up, whether it's on social media or to anybody they know. Like yeah. you spoke to this other person when the director told you to do this, and the first response you got was, "Do you really want to do this movie?" Yeah, I thought, "Oh shit! Oh maybe I, I completely ruined my opportunity to be in his film now, because right. I didn't I refused to perform that act in front of him." Right, and this is what a lot of people think that sexual harassment at the workplace and they think it's a failed attempt to flirt or joke, mm-hmm. but it's not that. Mm. It's not a failed attempt. You're expected to be a professional in your workplace. Yeah. You are supposed to not make anybody feel humiliated, mm-hmm. distressed, or make them feel unsafe in the same working place that you are you're at. Yeah. It is highly inappropriate if somebody told you to to do something in front of them, mm-hmm. whether it was a joke they thought it was, mm-hmm. or they were serious about it. And what is extremely important in today's time is to shift the question from what survivors could have done before, during, after the assault, mm-hmm. to why the perpetrators are doing this in the first place. Mm-hmm. What could they do to to prevent sexual violence from happening? Mm-hmm. What can what can the society do? Uh, to prevent sexual violence. One of the reasons why sexual assault also happens is because we enable such acts mm-hmm. by either falling for the myths that are that are around us mm-hmm. or that we choose to keep silent about these things. What do you mean by falling for the myths? If I ask a perpetrator why you sexually assault somebody, they would they would obviously make excuses for what happened, right? They would mm-hmm. say maybe she was wearing this, she was provocative in her clothing, so I couldn't control myself, mm-hmm. or uh, she shouldn't have been out in the night at this point of time. Mm. Or she asked me out on a date. Yeah, they, she she asked for it, right? Mm-hmm. This is their way of excusing their own behaviors. Mm-hmm. And when society falls for that and tries to be on their side mm-hmm. by accepting these myths, what we are doing is enabling an environment where sexual assault can happen. Imagine a society where everybody said, this is not acceptable, what you're mm-hmm. saying is wrong. Yeah. 
it doesn't matter what she's wearing it doesn't matter how much she had to drink mm -hmm. look at all the other men in the same club who choose not to sexually assault except that one man who chooses to do this mm -hmm. it will be a very different space for survivors survivors will feel so confident in reaching out for help they will feel so supported mm -hmm. to speak to somebody about what happened mm -hmm. instead of what's happening around us today yeah we shouldn't have to seek for help because it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Absolutely. And also teach our kids, who's our next generation, mm -hmm. about what consent is, what it means to respect other people, mm -hmm. what it means uh, to respect their, their choice to say no. Mm -hmm. uh, quite often we see our relatives forcefully kissing children. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's time we stop that because yeah. what you're confusing the children whether they have a choice to say no to such uh, touch or they don't have a choice. That is such a good point, it's true. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so many cases where uh, an uncle mm. uh, or an aunt, very few cases of aunts, uh, mm. where uh, it's somebody who's part of the family mm. who has sexually assaulted the child. Mm -hmm. So it's important to tell our children that no matter who it is, mm -hmm. nobody has a right to touch you. Mm. Yeah. So I've got Absolutely. knees and nephews, mm. and while one of my knees is absolutely okay if I give her a hug, yeah. the other kid says no. Yeah. And the day I heard this kid saying no, I stopped hugging him. Mm. I said, it's fine. Would you be okay with a high five? Yeah. And we high five all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think we definitely need to learn, te teach our children to learn that respect is very important right from, you know. Yeah. And if I don't respect young. that... I cannot expect that child to respect somebody else's choice of not being touched. That's where we enable those myths mm -hmm. where we think that sexual assault happens by these uh, scary looking mm -hmm. people yeah. uh, in dark alleys, in public places. Yeah. Uh, but that's definitely not the reality. No, it could be from a relative, somebody you, you've known all your life. I mean, people are afraid to talk about this topic. Mm. We go to universities to talk about this, and mm. sometimes we get a response that, oh, it doesn't happen in Singapore, mm. so why do we need really? to? Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, you get that response? Yeah, yeah, we do. We, I mean, people used to say, oh, it just doesn't happen in this country. It happens in other countries. Uh, so we've come a long way mm -hmm. where people no longer deny that it happens. Yeah. And that's why it's important to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that you have this show today mm -hmm. because we are able to talk about it and spread the message that time's up. Absolutely, time's up. We would really love to hear about your experiences and thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And more importantly, please share this video with everybody you know. You might actually really help somebody just by doing that.